Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Lloyd Borrell, from the website electricsense.com. Today I'm thrilled to have as my guest, Director of the Da Vinci Health, Holistic Health Center in Cyprus, Dr. George Georgiou. Dr. Georgiou has been a holistic clinician for over 30 years and holds 10 degrees and diplomas spanning over 20 years of graduate and postgraduate education in various topics ranging from biology, psychology, and natural medicine. For years, he, he battled with symptoms including headaches, migraines, fibromyalgia, bowel distension, and leaky gut syndrome before he was able to regain his health. <laughs> Dr. George Georgiou is the author of Curing the Incurable with Holistic Medicine, The Da Vinci Secret Revealed, and he has a thriving holistic health center on the Mediterranean island of Cyprus, which specializes in the treatment of chronic diseases, heavy metal toxicity, and candidiasis, along with many other health problems. You can contact Dr. Georgiou via the website naturaltherapycenter.com. That's all one word, naturaltherapycenter.com. Center is spelled C-E-N-T-E-R. Dr. George, welcome to the program. Thank you, Lloyd. It's uh, an honor to be with you uh, this evening. Um, you've certainly done a lot of work in the field of uh, electromagnetic frequencies and educating people, judging from your website. So Thanks. I'm excited to be with you. Well, I'm really, I'm really excited to have you on. And we've got a full house tonight, a lot of people interested uh, to hear you speak and uh, to, to learn what you've uh, got to say uh, on this subject. Uh, and the subjects are obviously electrical sensitivity, uh, detoxification, heavy metal detox. Uh, we're going to be talking about the causes of uh, incurable disease, how to reverse the causative factors, and much more. So lots and lots of questions. People have sent in questions also, so I'd like to cover them. Mm -hmm. And then I've got to open up the phone lines, uh, take questions from listeners. If you're listening via telephone or Skype, you have a question for Dr. George, then press star two on your phone dial. This tells me you've got a question to ask, and I'll take your question in a little while. So my first question, Dr. George, uh, before we talk about EMFs, electrical sensitivity, and what's in your book, I'd like to start off, as I usually do, <laughs> by talking about you uh, and your story. Uh, I'm always very interested, uh, and I think other people are also, uh, to learn you know, sort of the person. Um, you know, behind uh, behind all this, their, their story. The, the opening passages of your book set the scene well, uh, I think. In it, you say, to quote you, you say, despite all my knowledge in biology and the workings of the human body, at the age of 30, my health was a shambles. I could just about manage to crawl out of bed with excruciating pain in my body and band-type headaches that would last most of the day. I'd have a painful breakfast, drag myself to the office, see patients for a couple of hours, then back to bed for two, three hours before seeing a few more patients in the afternoon. Close quotes. <laughs> As I understand, uh, Dr. George, um, this went on for a number of years. I know a lot of people listening can identify with what you describe. I know I can. Uh, my question is, how did you go from that place of suffering uh, to where you are now? And, you know, where are you now? Are, are you symptom-free? Well, yes, uh, I'm, I'm pleased to say that I am symptom-free and, uh, you know, pretty much optimized uh, my health uh, because I am approaching uh, 60 years old now. Uh, but, uh, you know, I can still compete, you know, with 30-year-olds, um, you know, on my organic farm. Uh, where I get a lot of exercise and fresh air, and I'm obviously, you know, looking after my health to, in order to maintain the optimum uh, health that I have now. Uh, indeed, uh, back in my late 20s, um, I was a wreck. Um, I had uh, a lot of um, symptoms that were incapacitating, um, anything from fibromyalgia, where, you know, literally every muscle and joint of my body uh, was aching, um, band-type headaches, 
Um, I was visiting uh, medical practitioners at the time because I wasn't really into natural medicine, even though I had a bio biology degree. I was working more as a clinical psychologist and a clinical sexologist uh, because they were my initial degrees. And um, I um, wasn't getting much luck with the medical fraternity because they were trying to suppress symptoms uh, using antihistamines, using antibiotics, uh, even surgery. And uh, I, I got I got to a point after seven years where you know I was getting worse because of all the antibiotics they had given me. I had systemic candidiasis, leaky gut. My stomach wasn't producing hydrochloric acid. I wasn't able to um, uh, digest uh, proteins uh, and so on and so forth. And you know I was just going downhill. And that's when I picked up some books on natural medicine, began reading. And, um, you know, visiting some of those authors in person mm. uh, in order to see if I could get my health back on track. Um, and it was a long road, uh, which was over a decade. It was nearly 12 years of uh, continual education, uh, taking one de degree uh, after another, one diploma after another, even though I was incapacitated. Luckily, I had a biological background, so things were a lot easier for me. Right. And... Um, it was after those 12 years when I accumulated uh, 10 degrees and a couple of doctorates that I managed to really work out the protocols. And I do bow to my patients uh, for being able to experiment with them. Um, and this, th th it was at that time that I began seeing the light and uh, a lot of symptoms were shedding and I had developed uh, pretty uh, unique protocols uh, for helping other people as well. And, and that's when I got myself into um, uh, natural medicine, holistic medicine, um, founded the Da Vinci Holistic Health Center in Larnaca, Cyprus. Uh -huh. um, with, um, and, and now, of course, you know, we, we specialize in treating a lot of these um, chronically ill patients, you know, that don't have much hope uh, with the medical fraternity. So do you, do you feel that this experience, uh, unpleasant experience with chronic pain, made you, I guess you wouldn't have created the clinic if, uh, if you hadn't had that, but do you feel it makes you better equipped to heal other people? I think it was a godsend, Lloyd. It was a godsend. I, I think, you know, the the cosmic forces uh, were trying to, you know, push me in a direction, as is usually the case. And, uh, you know, the fact that I was the patient and I, you know, had that internal intrinsic motivation uh, to go through all that education and experimentation because I, you know, was experimenting my, uh, on myself uh, on a daily basis purchasing also a lot of diagnostic and therapeutic equipment, which of course now is in use with other people. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, when uh, people read the first chapter of my book, you know, that come to see me at the Da Vinci Holistic Health Center, I don't really have to say much because they know I was also a sufferer. So they understand, you know, how I, I felt. That's not They understand say, that you understand. Yes, but that's not to say, of course, that, you know, uh, practitioners have to have all the symptoms of their patients, including cancer, in order to understand. Uh, but I think it does help the, the, the patient sitting in front of you that you've been there and, and mm. you, you understand what pain is and, you know, what fibromyalgia is and what bowel right. distension is and what, you know, headaches mm. are and so on and so forth. Mm. I, I was also you... mercury toxic as well, right. and that was what was causing the uh, the um, uh, the band type headaches and a lot of the other symptoms uh, because right. uh, I you know was uh, I got myself into you know heavy metals so that they could cause a lot of problems. I had thirteen amalgams um, which I decided to go and have removed. Of course, the holistic dentist that I saw didn't understand collation protocols. So within uh, three months, removed 13 amalgams and my mercury levels shot, you know, off off the scale. Right. And uh, that's why I got into three years of research of developing a natural heavy metal chelator 
uh, called HMD um, because I wasn't really finding much out there that had been scientifically uh, studied and uh, the HMD uh, actually underwent double-blind placebo-controlled trials with 350 people. Oh. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about um, that side of it, um, the mercury, the amalgams, um, and 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 your protocol. Um, so just wanted to say also that it was hard because uh, you just very briefly. I don't really want to dwell on this aspect, but I know there was there was you you know there was a suffering, but also there was a persecution, was there not? From the medical community, um, and I, re I read, I think it was in your book where you, uh, you actually got arrested on one occasion uh, yeah, because they didn't I, like what you were, you know, the, the medicine that you were practicing. Yeah, ba basically because natural medicine is pretty new here in Cyprus. Um, even when I was working as a clinical sexologist, because I was the first professional sexologist on the island, um, and prior to that. It was the medical uh, profession that was seeing uh, all these patients with sexual uh, issues. Mm. Um, it, it was, you know, and, and they told me straight, you know, because when I, I sat down with them and said, look, you know, let, let's discuss our differences. You know, what, what, what is mm. the difference? Because it's the patient that should be the focus. And, you know, we, we have different ways of helping the patient and anything that can help the patient is good. Mm. Um, and you know they simply that's all that counts isn't it <laughs> of course it is but unfortunately with the interests uh, the self interests mm. of big pharma you know of the medical fraternity you know they turned around and said to me you're eating from our pie you know right. that was the response and they actually said that to a journalist and it was published in the newspaper as well so yes I, I have been persecuted in that sense um i've been on the front lines and i mm -hmm. guess most people on the front lines do get persecuted it was interesting in sutton coalfield um in in the uk uh, in last november um there was an international conference on alternatives to antibiotics i was one of the speakers and there were other international speakers from different countries and when we were introduced they said every, every speaker that you will hear tonight has actually been arrested <laughs> <laughs> so you know if you are on the front lines uh, you can expect mm. that uh, but uh, I guess knowledge is power so mm. you know if you if you have the knowledge um, and I, I do you know all sorts of programs and radio programs and TV programs I've actually got a program tomorrow morning on national TV mm -hmm. um, they, they, they hear you and I think at the end of the day it's the people that make the decision yeah yeah. Yeah. But I've been hand handcuffed and taken down yeah. to cells and yeah, <laughs> that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Well you've got one on got me then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah, so I want to say your book uh, is about holistic medicine. Uh on the back cover it says um this book quote, this book will help you identify the main cause of your incurable disease, understand its pathogenesis, that's say where it began, how it evolved and what you must do to begin reversing these causative factors. Can you explain to our listeners just briefly what uh, you consider holistic medicine to be and how you approach chronic disease? Well, holistic medicine um, is, is not a monomodality um, uh, therapeutic method. For example, homeopathy is monomodality. It's it's one approach. You know, so if you go to a homeopath, they will look at you from a homeopathic perspective. Full stop. Probably won't talk too much about nutrition. They probably will not look at you know energy factors. You know, electromagnetic sensitivity, geopathic stress. They won't look at you know um, microbe loads and parasites and bacteria and viruses. They won't look at heavy metal toxicity. They won't look at the psycho-emotional state. They won't look at the person's consciousness. They won't look at you know their spiritual beliefs. They won't look at their relationship with their family, their society, um, their friends, uh, and so on and so forth. But mm. all these factors are extremely important in health. 
And, mm. um, you know, we try to look at all of these um, in a holistic model. And that's what really holistic medicine is. It's looking at the person on all these levels of health, uh, from the spiritual, psychological, emotional, through to the physical, but also the energetic, and also relationships uh, that they have in their family and their society. Now, over the years of experimentation, I began um, uh, experimenting with uh, various uh, diagnostic methods. And um, over the years, it, it did take me many years, probably uh, nearly 20 years, to sort of join the dots together and put everything mm. together in, in what is now called the IDEL, I-D-E-L, it's an acronym for Identify right. and Eliminate, right. IDEL Diagnostic Program. Okay. So when a patient comes in, and I do have a lot of international patients that fly in, mm -hmm. you know, we don't have a lot of time to work. So mm. they, the, 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 their initial appointment for the IDEL Diagnostics is, is five hours. Um, mm. So I spend a whole morning with them. They go through a whole myriad of different uh, diagnostic and analytical tests um, from uh, bioresonance testing all the way through to thermography, uh, live blood analysis, uh, heart rate variability testing. We do autonomic response testing. We try and identify all the underlying causative factors in those five hours. Mm -hmm. And it also gives me an opportunity, of course, of talking to them, getting to know them better, understanding their worries, their concerns, their unresolved conflicts, uh, their spiritual concerns, their family concerns, and so on and so forth. And then I work in the background in the next few days until all the results come back. And then I put together a bespoke treatment pro protocol for that particular patient. Because mm -hmm. if, you, if you have... 10 patients, let's say, with fibromyalgia, you cannot treat them in exactly the same way because the underlying causative factors of each of those is going to be different. Right. And, and it is an arduous process. There's no shortcuts. I, I've tried to find shortcuts, but it just simply doesn't work. And uh, all those 15 case histories in the back of the book um, uh, were all incurable patients. That's why the title of the book is curing the incurable in inverted commas mm. because they were considered incurable by the medical profession. Yeah. But working in this systematic way where I really become Sherlock Holmes, I put my Sherlock Holmes hat on, I become the detective, <laughs> and off I go and I uh, begin... That's who you remind me of. <laughs> well, he was my hero, I must admit. I've, I've even been to his house in Baker Street, you know. Uh, but... Um, he uh, basically, um, you know, Sherlock Holmes also was thinking outside the box. And, and this is what we need to do. That's why often I, I'm not really interested in, in hearing the labeling of the disease because the label is a descrip description of symptoms. It's not telling us anything about the underlying causative factors. And in holistic medicine, that's where we focus. Yeah. because we need to put the underlying causative factors on the table. Then we need to offload those by using various protocols that touch on many uh, aspects of natural medicine. Uh, so we use clinical nutrition and homeopathy and acupuncture and bioresonance and electromedicine and pulsing electromagnetic fields and ozone saunas and infrared saunas and uh, rife technologies and so on and so forth. You know, whatever it takes, basically, to offload the underlying causative factors. And all patients will go through a detox regime. We also have a section in the center uh, where we have uh, set up uh, quite a lot of equipment uh, for speeding up the healing process. Uh, a lot of what I already mentioned, the ozone sauna, the infrared sauna, the papimi, the rife, uh, and so on and so forth. And patients, um, international patients, or even separate patients can spend, um, it takes about four hours to complete the whole circuit. And that really does speed up uh, the healing reaction, uh, the, um, the repair um, and rebuilding process of the body 
uh, increases the transmembrane potential of cells because when cells get sick, their voltage drops, and so therefore uh, equipment such as the pulsing electromagnetic fields can actually help to increase that voltage back to the optimum, and so therefore the metabolic functions of the cells begin to optimize, and so on and so forth. And, and then we use you know a variety of uh, other detox um, regimes. You know they stay on the a detox diet of fruit and vegetables for a couple of weeks. Um, they'll uh, clean their liver and gallbladder. Uh, they will also uh, undergo um, a parasite uh, detox. I, I also use uh, small bioresonance devices. Um, they're Russian devices uh, made by a company called Deterellis. There, there is actually a website, deter-ellis-uk.com. If anybody is interested in reading about them, uh, they're smart, uh, innovative, uh, small devices, no bigger than a mobile phone that can be programmed with a lot of um, different frequencies that that have a, a healing effect. Uh, because we are made of energy, you know, right. we are all frequency. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're we're all made of uh, atoms and some subatomic particles, yeah. and so therefore. If we can balance those energies utilizing different ways, and, and bioresonance is one way of doing that, then we can begin to make uh, homeostatic adjustments in the body. Right. Okay. So uh, I'd like to talk about more specifically EMS and electrical sensitivity, if we may. Mm-hmm. Um, when we spoke previously, you mentioned you've treated a lot of people with electrical sensitivity. Um, can you explain um, what your protocol is or if you've got a protocol? Uh, and is it the same as treating any other chronic disease? Uh, and what's your success rate on that? Well, um you know, people with electromagnetic sensitivity, uh, I don't think they, you know, have me as a first stop. Um, and also the $10 million question is, how does one differentiate uh, between electromagnetic sensitivity and uh, other underlying causative factors? Because many, many of the symptoms of electromagnetic sensitivity will also be the same symptoms of systemic candidiasis, of um, parasite bacterial viral infestations, mm -hmm. of, um, uh, of uh, nutrient deficiencies, uh, of uh, you know, many, many other underlying causative factors. So yeah. how does one differentiate? Uh, there are ways of testing uh, patients for electromagnetic sensitivity. You have to use bioresonance testing or autonomic response testing, which is uh, commonly known as kinesiology, but it's a more sophisticated form of kinesiology. And, you know, it, it doesn't take me long to determine whether someone uh, has electromagnetic sensitivity. Having said that, though, um, I would confidently say that probably... 75% of the patients that I see have electromagnetic sensitivity. Wow. So how does, how does one now unravel the labyrinth of, you know, okay, this patient has electromagnetic sensitivity, mm. they have XYZ symptoms, but mm. they also have 20 other underlying causative factors. Right. So, so, so it's a symptom, a symptom for you, it's a symptom amongst many others, and what you're interested in is the causative factor and... Uh, which may or not be EMS. Is that what you're saying? Yes, but let's let's make the assumption because you know we are you know focusing on that because uh, of the nature of the program. Uh, let's let's make the assumption that yes, they are electromagnetically sensitive. Uh, I mean, I'll give you an example of a taxi driver that came in with vertigo. Yeah, and um, you know, I I he sat in front of me big guy, he was a bodybuilder, and uh, I uh, started taking history, and then he took, um, his phone started ringing, and then he, he took uh, the, the, the phone out, he answered it, and then he put it on the desk, and then he took out another phone from, from another pocket, threw it on the desk, I looked at these phones, and they were new technology, new, new, new phones, but they looked as if they'd been very well used. 
So I asked him, how long do you spend talking on mobile phones? So he said, oh, between three, three and a half hours a day, uh, because, you know, people were calling him, obviously, he was a taxi driver. His auntie was sitting there, she happened to be a matron as well, nurse, and uh, I asked her to dial his number. When his phone started ringing, um, I had him standing and I was muscle testing him. Uh, his arms were as thick as my thighs. I was literally <laughs> swinging on his arm, you know, like a little monkey. And as soon as uh, I, I, I said to him, now answer the phone, um, he, um, he put the phone to his ear and his hand dropped like uh, a, a brick. And he said, what have you done? And I said, I, it's not me that's done it. It's the stress of the electromagnetic fields and the microwaves that are going into your body that have shut down your autonomic nervous system. And this is an autonomic nervous system response. And then we actually went out into his taxi cab and, you know, I was interested to see if there's other electromagnetic fields in the taxi cab as well. He had, a, uh, he had two DVD players in the back seat. He had two DVD players in the front seat. One was in his, in his mirror. And he had a mobile computer on board as well that he would spend hours between, you know, between customers. Uh, the, when I measured it with the electromagnetic meter, it was off the scale, off the scale. Mm. Uh, so, um, you know, we, we looked further, you know, we found heavy metals. Heavy metals uh, is an excellent conductor of electromagnetic fields. Mm. So it's good to begin mobilizing and eliminating those heavy metals. Wearing jewelry, anything metallic, even belt buckles, is another antenna for attracting electromagnetic fields. Mm. So if you're already sensitive, you don't want to be, you know, walking around with, you know, big, big, you know, gold crucifixes and big, thick, right. you know, belt buckles and, you know, rings yeah. and things like that. So even you know, metal glasses, even metal frames. Yes, even metal, anything metallic, you know, is a, is a conductor and it does attract electromagnetic fields into the body. Also. Um, you know, talking about simple things that they can do at home, like, you know, switching from, you know, Wi-Fi to, you know, cable, mm -hmm. uh, to, or, or if they can't do that, at least switching off the Wi-Fi, um, um, which often they have in their bedrooms, um, switching it off at night, um, ma making certain that, uh, you know, they don't have electric clocks, you know, uh, sitting on their bedside tables or other electrical equipment. Uh, don't have mobile phones sitting next to you. Don't use mobile phones, you know, when you speak or, or on your ear, you know, use uh, speaker phone if you have to. Yeah. Do not carry mobile phones with you because every few minutes they're communicating with base stations. And, you know, if you measure it, I often just put the electromagnetic meter on the mobile phone and I say, watch this. And within two or three minutes, it's communicated with the base phone and it's off the clock. Yeah. And then I dial the number, and again, the electromagnetic meter goes off the clock. Uh, of course, if they're carrying that, they're also receiving all that electromagnetic field. Oh. The, the thing that um, maybe conceptually is interesting for the listeners to understand is that all negative energy has a left spin, a left spin. Mm -hmm. So all the atoms, if you like, or the subatomic particles are actually spinning left. All positive energy has a right spin. So when you've got a mobile phone, for example, in your pocket, and uh, you are, are being exposed to all this electromagnetic field, it can actually cause a left spin on your blood, on the plasma, on uh, organ systems. Uh, they can be very specific organ systems as well. Uh, we have what's known as a spin tester on the bioresonance devices that we have in the Da Vinci Center where we can actually measure uh, the left spin, uh, which is negative energy in different organ systems. We can measure it in blood, we can measure it in plasma. 
Right. And we also have ways of converting or tra tra uh, or, or, or of um, of changing the left spin into right spin. Uh, we we can do that either you know with various homeopathic uh, substances or we can do it with bioresonance therapy, mm -hmm. and um, we can also. Um, we, that's we what you did with the taxi driver, was it? Sorry. That's yes, that's the, what taxi you did with the taxi, taxi driver. driver. Yeah, yeah. The taxi driver, you know, went through you know some of these uh, therapies that I'm talking about. Um, and, you know, within a few weeks, uh, you know, his vertigo went away, you know, he's feeling much better, you know, his energy returned because, you know, with electromagnetic sensitivity or hypersensitivity, mm. your energy levels do tend to drop. Um, right. But what, yeah, absolutely. What I was saying was what I was trying to, was uh, you used homeopathy with the uh, taxi driver also. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, yeah, we did. Yeah. We yeah. did. We also used bioresonance devices. And you, if I remember correctly, you said you put it in his in his car, the homeopathy, to start with. Was that right? Uh, well, yes, because, you know, if you want to, if you want to make an, an antidote, if you like, you know, you've got to pick up the negative so energy. homeopathy law is similar to those that are not uh, familiar yeah, with so, how so homeopathy if, works. Yeah, so if you Cure, take... Curing like with like. Yes, but if you take the sugar pills and you actually, uh, we, we put it into his taxi for half an hour. Mm -hmm. You know, and and so it picked up all that electromagnetic radiation, this this soup of electromagnetic radiation that was right. all right. locked in now into the uh, sugar pills. Right. And, right. and and then we made that into a, a homeopathic potency. Okay. And then he took you know the homeopathic potency, not the sugar pills with you know the electromagnetic field stored in them. Uh, so that that was one. So just one. So, so what you put in his car was just sugar pills. Yes. Or it was a, yeah, and that yeah, absorbed could, this this radio this uh, EMF energy, microwave energy, radio frequency energy, and then you right. made by the law of similars, you made um, a homeopathic a homeopathic remedy using that. Correct. That was the mother tincture zero. And then, you know, we made different potencies and homochords of, of different potencies into one mixture uh, of, of uh, that mother tincture. So, you know, we called it a electromagnetic homeopathic. Right. Yeah. That's fascinating. Um, and this, you said um, about this spin, which is also fascinating because uh, I've not heard anybody talk about that before, uh, about this negative spin. So negative uh, energy has a left spin and, and positive energy has a right spin. Correct. So optimally, we want to be right spinning everything. Uh, Correct. Organs, blood, everything wants to be right spinning. And Correct. so is it this DetaEllisUK.com uh, where you can have, they do these spin testers? Is that correct? No, they don't do the spin testers. They they do the small uh, bioresonance devices. Uh, right. One is called the Davita app, uh, which is basically for the microbes, and the Davita Ritme uh, is uh, is for upregulating organ systems. But there are also you know three thousand programs that can be programmed onto these two devices uh, right. by by a, so a small USB, and and that has programs for reversing the left spin. Okay. Yeah. That so um, what, I, what I was getting at is uh, for an individual, um, you, you can't buy a device which tells you which way you're spinning. No, so it's, it's, a, it's, a very, it's a very complex it's science, complex. Lloyd, and it's only for practitioners who, who are specially trained in, in the use of these devices. It's not just you know, an off-the-shelf device that anybody can pick up and, and test themselves. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, there, there are other ways. Uh, and, and another another good way, uh, just to finish this particular issue, because I think it will be of interest to those that are electromagnetically sensitive, yeah. is um, I, I, I experimented with various devices. You know, there are many devices uh, on the on on the internet uh, that one can buy that say that you know they're good for you know, reducing electromagnetic sensitivity. I tried many of them. I actually spent thousands on, on testing many of these devices. 
But probably the one that really caught my attention, because, you know, my middle name is Thomas. You know, I do not believe unless I see, unless mm-hmm. I test, you know. Doubting. So okay. uh, my middle name is actually Sherlock Holmes. But uh, so I thought it was when, John. <laughs> <laughs> that's my real one. <laughs> but but uh, the tachyon energized crystals were the ones that really caught my attention. Tachyon is spelled T-A-C-H-Y-O-N. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it's, uh, it's quantum. Mm. It's, you know, subatomic particles, you know, zero time and space, etc. But basically, w- to simplify things, that what, what the tachyon energized crystals do is they will uh, convert the left spin to right spin. So if we could measure, for example, the screen that we're all looking at at this moment in time on our computers, there would be lots of left spin, you know, subatomic particles coming out of that, which could also enter our bodies and and cause, you know, other left spin interferences. If um, we have uh, a uh, tachyon energized crystal in front of the screen, then as soon as the left spin particles leave, they are converted into right spin particles, and if you like, they're neutralized, mm-hmm. they're transformed. And there are a variety of different crystals that do different things. You know, one is for electromagnetic fields on screens, another one is for telephones, another one is for geopathic stress and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, well, that's good to know. Um, I'm wary of these devices because the danger is that people um, buy them because that's really what most people are drawn to. There's so many devices and people are looking for a quick fix and they're not at all taking into account the holistic aspect. And... That's to say, looking at health on all the levels, of you, as you've described it. Yeah, and, it goes without uh, saying. Right. And, and so it's just a question of, you know, I'll buy this thing at $100, whatever, and that means I can, you know, um, I, can, uh, I can just carry on and, and use my cell phone eight hours a day and uh, Wi-Fi and, 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 and all the rest of it. And that for, me, that, for me, is the danger of these things plus the fact that we don't know, you know, in terms of the links between these devices and, you know, what the studies are saying about so many different illnesses, namely cancer. Um, we don't know that, um, you know, they are protecting you, um, you know, from uh, whatever disease, you know, that um, exposure to EMFs might, might be causing. Yeah, outside the holistic model, Lloyd, there are no quick fixes. No. Uh, and so, therefore, you know, people that just think that they can buy even a tachyon energized crystal and, and just use that, but, you know, carry on exposing themselves uh, to all these electromagnetic frequencies, no, that's not going to work. Uh, you know, their health is going to deteriorate. But when one approaches it within a holistic model and uses the tachyon energized crystals as part of the therapeutic protocols plus everything else, then it can become very, very effective because, of course, there's a synergistic effect. Mm -hmm. You know, one plus one doesn't necessarily equal two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. yeah, I, I, I mean, people that, you know, truly believe that they have some chronic disease need to really look on different levels and not just, you know, be, be content by saying, you know, okay, I'm suffering from electromagnetic hypersensitivity. Mm. And so, therefore, you know, I need well, it's, to... Well, it's usually it's, just kind of, yeah, I've got to put the cell phone next to me. That's what my case was. Put the cell phone next to me here. I've got this terrible headache, earache. You know, or yeah. as soon as I get around Wi-Fi, I've got this terrible headache, or you know, it's it's yeah. those kind of symptoms people usually you know are experiencing. Yeah, looking looking at a person's occupation as well, and uh, you know, asking questions regarding you know their their um, uh, the exposure that they've had to electromagnetic fields is also an important diagnostic tool. Mm. 
uh, you know, I, I mean, I have a friend, uh, Graham, who worked in the military. He was an electronic engineer in the military, and um, he was sitting next to huge transmitters, you know, for hours and hours and hours. And yes, he does have electromagnetic sensitivity as part of, you know, other causative factors for, for his, you know, chronic health problems, mm -hmm. which managed to reverse over time quite considerably. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 you know, he's still, um, you know, quite sensitive to electromagnetic fields. You know, he gets a red nose if he puts a phone to his ear for, you know, three or four minutes, for example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is, um, you know, fascinating. Uh, I'm sure uh, people that are listening are finding it fascinating. Uh, got... I won't be able to ask nearly as many questions as I thought I was going to, but I was really, I think it's really important um, because you've got a lot to talk about and a lot to say on this uh, subject, and it's particularly important, you know, to, to address, the, obviously, uh, EMFs and electrical sensitivity in, in detail. Um, but so if you're, just to remind people, if you're listening via telephone or Skype and you have a question for Dr. George, then press the star 2 on your phone dial. This tells me you've got a question to ask, and I'll take your question shortly. Um, so um, we're going to move on to some uh, readers' questions, some listeners' questions that people have sent in. And because uh, I know detox is, because uh, I've read your book, obviously read it actually um, a good many years ago, well, a, few, a good few years ago, um, it was part of the research I did for, for my book about electrical sensitivity, and I thought it was a fantastic book. It's a huge book, like 600 pages. Um, and it's, um, yeah, it's a great book. Um, and so, and you talk uh, in that book about detox. Um, and so I've got a question here from Eileen, who's saying, uh, if metal toxicity is suspected, what is the best protocol, and is it necessary to work with a physician, naturopath, who is experienced in how to safely detox. She also says, mosquito bites were a precursor to my reoccurring rashes and then later the noticeable EMS sensitivity. Is that significant? So the question mm -hmm. is, metal toxicity, what's the best protocol? Is it necessary well, there, to work there, with a there physician? There is definitely a relationship between heavy metal toxicity and the degree of uh, tox uh, the toxic metals in the body and electromagnetic hypersensitivity. Uh, I, it's, it's a big topic, you know, that we can't do it justice in, you know, the minute or two that we have to answer that. But I have written a lot of material on a site called detoxmetals.com, mm -hmm. detoxmetals.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is the product that I personally use mainly because I did the science behind it. Um, and we found that it did indeed um, uh, detoxify uh, and chelate all toxic metals that we've tested so far, including mm -hmm. uh, uranium-238, mercury, uh, nickel, uh, antimony, um, cadmium, uh, lead, uh, and so on and so forth. Mm. And uh, the protocols are on the website. You know. Mm. However, what I would say is that uh, we need to differentiate between mobilizing toxins in the body, whatever type of toxins they may be, including heavy metals, and mm. eliminating them. Many people, including practitioners that I teach around the world, they um, do not pay too much emphasis on the elimination pathways or, or the drainage they're more interested in moving in with aggressive um, chelation protocols that mobilize a lot of mo uh, heavy metals. They pull them out of the cells, and then they sit in the mesenchyme in the space outside the cells. And um, they, they wait. You know, as, as a concentration, of course, of uh, heavy metals increase in the mesenchyme, then by the law of osmosis, they'll go back into the cell. Mm. So you need to... Uh, have uh, ways of carrying those metals away from the mesenchyme and of course they will migrate to the detoxification um, organs of the body which include the liver and the kidneys and the lymphatics 
So you need to use drainage remedies in order to open up those drainage channels to allow the elimination of the toxins out of the body. Or otherwise, they will just be uh, circulating, mm. and you know they, they will be uh, absorbed back into tissues and, and organs, and then they will come out and they will go somewhere else, etc. And of course, if you're suffering from a neurological uh, problem you mm. don't want these going back into the brain because otherwise you fall off a cliff edge. Right. This is why in the protocol on the website, and I do please beg all the uh, listeners who are interested in actually doing this themselves to read carefully uh, you know, the various protocols that I've written. There's also uh, another product that I developed called Lavage, which is exactly a drainage um, lavage is the French word for drainage. Correct. And, and it, it is um, a drainage remedy, and I also use chl chlorella, which um, mops up, you know, all the stray heavy metals that may be lying around the mesenchyme or in into the gut to prevent their reabsorption from the gut. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a, again, it's a holistic protocol. Because mm -hmm. when I when when I first developed it and it went onto the market. Uh, a lot of practitioners, particularly in America, were using it with autistic children, and I was getting a myriad uh, of, of uh, emails every week, you know, saying that these kids were um, were, were having um, a detoxification crises, you know, mm. and that's when I thought, well, they're not eliminating the metals that are being mobilized, and that's where I put my thinking cap on came up with the lavage and the chlorella and since then honestly I probably get no more than one email a year uh, from practitioners using it with autistic children right okay so, so two you very important two components you, mobilizing and eliminating if you're yeah so the 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 essence of what I'm saying is you need to go slowly yeah. uh, if the if the dosage of HMD is 45 drops three times a day and you suspect that you know you're blocked, you know your drainage, uh, your detoxification organs are blocked. Then start with one drop, mm. three times a day, and then up it one drop at a time. Right. And and go slowly. And is this? Do you feel this is something that somebody can do on their own, or do they have yes, to go? Yes, they can. Through? Yes, they can. Yeah, but that that's why I'm emphasizing. A few so key they, points. there's something they feel or they muscle test to determine, or what? What do you advise? Well, there is also a tissue and hair mineral analysis test that can be done online. You know, you can actually purchase the test, and of course, it gets sent to, off to an American laboratory, and they come back with a full report because they run it through spectrometers. It's actually done with a hair test, yeah. and there they can determine the level of, you know, their toxic metals in circulation, at least. And then there's another protocol for how. Yeah, yes, you can't always tell with that, can you? Well, that's what I said in circulation. It, yeah. it doesn't tell you what is actually stored in the organs and the tissues. Right. It only tells you what has been in circulation over the last two months. But that's why I said I've written another scientific paper to determine how to measure what is actually stored in the right. body tissues by running another tissue hand mineral analysis two months after while taking the HMD. Right. So you flush it out and then you test again and see what's happening. Yeah, so usually if you're taking HMD and you run a second test, even though on the first test you, you, you find zero heavy metals, if they're stored in the, in the tissues and organs and you're pulling them out now, in the second test, the post-test, you're going to get an increase in heavy metals and often they go off the scale. That is telling you that this person has a lot of heavy metals stored in their body. Right. Okay, so just a quick reminder, of the folks, um, if you're listening via telephone or Skype, you've got a question for Dr. George, press start on your phone dial. We're going to take your questions. Um, I'm just going to uh, very briefly finish off on this subject uh, with a question from uh, Kathy. So we're going to uh, do this question, and then I'm going to take um, listeners' questions. Um, so Kathy from Portland says, I'm interested in learning about how to heal from mercury poisoning. I collated from my high levels of mercury, but continue to get severe muscle weakness. Is there anything yeah. I can do to reverse this? 
read the material on detoxmetals.com right. and go gently. Start right. with one drop of the HMD three times a day, second day two drops three times a day, third day three okay. drops. Three. Okay. Do not start with 45 drops because you'll be mobilizing too much mercury and you, your body may not be able to cope with the elimination, and then you will have an exacerbation of symptoms, a detox right. crisis. That's why we, uh, you, I emphasize the difference between the mobilization and the elimination. It's critical. Right. It's crucial. Okay. Okay. So we've got a um, caller here in uh, Austin, Texas. Um I'm not giving a name here, but hello, caller in Austin, Texas. Um, hi. Hi. I guess that's me. Um, that's yeah, you. I have a question. Who are we speaking to? My name is Todd Williams. Okay. Hi, Todd. Hi. Yeah, sorry, I called via Skype because it doesn't have caller ID functions. I um, So I, I, I'll i keep the story short. I, EMS sensitivity kind of cost me a job a while back, and I've been unemployed for a year. So what's an inexpensive way? What's the simplest thing I could do for myself besides, of course, avoiding all all things that are going to worsen my symptoms, like my cell phone? That's just why I'm using Skype right now. Mm-hmm. What's the what's a good way to start? Because I I don't know that I can afford a treatment protocol right now. Right. Great question. Uh, okay. So so uh, shall shall I answer that now, Lloyd? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah, please, Dr. Okay. George. <laughs> um, well, um, you know, probably the most cost-effective but very highly effective um, natural protocol to follow is to alkalize your body. Uh, remove inflammatory chemicals uh, and also toxins. And the best way of doing that is just to stay on fruit and vegetables for two weeks. So... You're, you're eating I'm, fruit. I'm a vegan, but I still Sorry? have I'm a vegan. Yeah, but v- vegans can also be eating cereal products. They can be eating breads. Okay. They can be eating, um, sure. you know, pulses, etc. Uh, when I say fruit and vegetables, I mean minus all that. No cereals, no pulses, obviously no meats, no fish, no eggs, no, no dairy products, etc. You become a bunny rabbit for two weeks. Okay. Um, but, so... so you can drink uh, some vegetable juices, you know, carrot as a base, you know, have some greens going through, anything green in the fridge, uh, including a beetroot, which is very detoxifying for the blood and the liver. Um, you can uh, steam fry vegetables. You can steam vegetables with some olive oil and some lemon, lemon juice. You can um, uh, put vegetables in the oven. You can have vegetable soups. Um, you can eat vegetables in any way you like, obviously, raw vegetables as well, salads. And mm. you, you will probably find that most people will have a 20 to 50% improvement in many symptoms simply by doing that. Why? Okay, thank you. Because you are removing inflammatory chemicals. You're probably cutting... Uh, out a lot of food intolerances that will cause internal inflammation in the body. It's the biggest source of internal inflammation because we're eating foods, you know, three, four times a day. Um, And so as the body, you know, offloads all these inflammatory chemicals, then the cells of the body begin to breathe and their energy production increases, their metabolic uh, uh, efficiency increases, and generally people feel better. That's a starting point. It doesn't cost much. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then, of course, one could you know, clean the liver and the gallbladder by doing a gallbladder flush. Uh, the instructions for that would be on my website, naturaltherapycenter.com. Um, the... Um, um, uh, the heavy metal protocol, because, you know, pretty much the, the whole planet, you know, has some level of heavy metals in their bodies. You know, they've even found it in, you know, newborn babies up in 
uh, up in Newfoundland, you know, in the Eskimo world. Um, yeah, it's everywhere. So, uh, you know, maybe, you know, taking some HMD and, you know, running that protocol with the lavage. Okay, there, there is a small investment there, not a big deal. Uh, but, you know, that, again, is another way of offloading, uh, you know, a toxic load. And and probably, you know, to take a good quality high potency multivitamin, you know, maybe with some omega-3, 6 and 9, you know, which the body converts into natural anti-inflammatories, prostaglandins. Um, you know, these, these I think, are, are simple things where you will get a shift in your health unless you are extremely complex and have you know 30 causative factors on your shoulders uh, which are just simply crushing you and there you unfortunately would need you know an experienced practitioner to go through the labyrinth with their Sherlock Holmes hat on their head <laughs> excellent does that answer your question Todd yes thank you yeah yeah excellent okay that's uh, actually that answers my question too, because that's exactly really uh, what I was going to say is because uh, you're in Cyprus, uh, it just sounds just sounds so fantastic Mediterranean. I'm not being, to, I've got quite a few friends actually, curiously enough, who are from Cyprus. Um, you know, old kind of uh, university friends. It just so happens in because, uh, um, but I've never been. I've never been, um, but I'm. And um, I'd love to go, and I'm sure there's a lot of people who love to go, uh, but can't go for whatever reason. I will go one day. I'll pop in and see you. You're, you're, you're welcome. You're welcome, Lord. <laughs> you know, you're here. We'll host you. <laughs> but yeah, that was my question. Uh, really, was to uh, because uh, you've talked about a lot, and uh, you know, uh, which, uh, as you say, it is very bespoke. And um, I, I was really just looking for some basic advice beyond kind of um, EMF uh, mitigation, you know, as to what people can do, a starting point. And I think, uh, I think what you said answers it beautifully. So uh, alkalize, uh, you said a, a gold bladder, a bladder flush, heavy metal protocol, um, and, uh, and uh, vitamins uh, to get this shift in your health, as you say, uh, is a good start. No guarantees. But uh, no, it's already a hell of a really start. If you're really complex, you know, you may have some healing crises. Um, but I would say, you know, this could be applied probably for 80% of people with symptoms. It's it's normally the sort of 15, 20% that, you know, are really complex. And, right. you know, they they really need a lot a lot of work. They're, you know, putting, putting them under a microscope uh, and studying them for a number of hours. Yeah, uh, yeah, which of course is is not for everybody. I understand. It's not for everybody. But, yeah, but yeah. but you know, it's the only way I know of dealing with complex, you know, problems, com yeah. cl chronic, um, you know, health issues, okay. um, which which okay. are life threatening, and um, I, really I don't know, I don't really know any other way, and I also can't clone myself, you know, to be in different parts mm -hmm. of the world because. Mm -hmm. You understand that you know there's a whole center here with you know hundreds of thousands of, of equipment and, of and 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 also it, it's very personal because you know I've had offers and venture capitalists have come in they wanted you know me to franchise and I said it doesn't work it becomes a conveyor belt you know this right. is a one to one very personal it's about the relationship that, also yeah. Absolutely, and that's the way I want to keep it. You know, I'm not interested, you know, in the in the financial side of things. I'm interested in, um, you know, helping the people because it gives me a lot of sp spiritual satisfaction uh, right. to help turn someone's health around, um, you know, in a few months, and and you know they've been suffering for 20 years. Absolutely. And I know what it feels like. Absolutely. Um, so we're going to run over a little bit, um, and I know you said you'd be, you'd be okay on that. And I'd just like to try and get one more question. We've got um, uh, somebody called Marie, I think it is, here in Santa Ana, uh, yeah, California. Th yes, thank you very much. Uh, I live in Tustin, actually, California. Yes. I, okay. I just, I was, I was, I love your whole webinar. This has been fantastic, by the way. Um, the Pacian energized crystals I, I went online and I tried to pull it up and I maybe I'm spelling it wrong I am hearing impaired 
How, how do you spell that? T, so T A C H Y O N. Okay. And they're right. energized crystals, right? Yes, yes. It's a proprietary process. It actually takes two weeks to energize them, but once they're uh, tachyon energized, uh, then they're for life. All right. Thank you so much, and thank you for all you do. Thank, thank you. you. Right. That's great. Um, just to remind Marie and others, look at the, as Dr. George says, you've got to look at the big picture. Don't just buy the gadgets and assume that that is the end of it and that you're safe. You know, it doesn't work like that. You know, look at look at the big picture. We're multi-level beings, and um, you, that's how you need to address this issue. Um, so, yeah, um, just the last question. Um, so you've been practicing for 30 years, if I understand something like that. Uh, I didn't realize you were 60, actually. You sound and look uh, really young. Uh, or younger than that, anyway. Uh, well, most people, well, most people say I, I'm sort of early fifties, you know. But um, yeah. you know, again, so I, I bounce obviously my you must be doing something right. Well, uh, you know, the the fact that I'm now maintaining my health um, from everything that I've learned, you know, because I have to be an example, you know, and also as a practitioner, one has to be healthier than their patients. Otherwise, they absorb the, the patient's pathological energies, and of course, the patient absorbs the pathological energies of the, the therapist. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you, you've got to, it's a, it's a form of protection, you know, being uh, optimum health as a practitioner. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, you know, I sleep, you know, sort of five hours uh, a day, and, you know, the rest of the time is, is work, work, work. But, you know, when you enjoy what you're doing, you know, it, it's enjoyable. It's a, yeah, it's not really work. Yeah. Not yeah. really, no. <laughs> um, and so would you say that, so I'm just sort of trying to get your perspective on this. In the 30 years or so that you've been doing this, uh, well, not doing that, but um, you've been um, treating people, um, can you say that there's been, do you feel as though there's an increase in cases with people with electrical sensitivity? Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, that absolutely, you know, because, you know, the electromagnetic magnetic devices, you know, are spreading like wildfire. Um, and, and, of course, you know, the, the research to protect the public against these electro uh, magnetic devices are not there mm. because of the self-interests mm. mm. and so therefore yeah that's why we need to educate ourselves as the right. general public yeah and we need you know to take our own precautions i mm. i've read some of the encyclicals that um a various uh, ministry of health uh, from different countries have written and, uh, you know, it was clear from those uh, encyclicals, the warning that mobile phones, for example, should not be used by, you know, anybody less than uh, 16, uh, uh, anybody um, younger than 16 years old. You know, that, that sort of warning was given. And, of course, we know from thermography studies that, you know, these electromagnetic uh, waves uh, penetrate um, through the brain of a five-year-old, three-quarters of the brain. Yeah. Through a 10-year-old, is about half the brain. Yeah. Through an adult brain, it's, you know, a good sort of mm. three, four centimeters. Absolutely. You know? and, and, the and facts are there, but there's not that many people paying attention to them. And unfortunately, the ones that are, it's not that it's too late, but it's like it's already happened. You know, is already we a have problem. to respect the technology, Lloyd. It's not that the technology is bad per se. No, it's how it, we use it. It's how we use it and abuse it. You know, and there is a difference. Uh, and th this is, you know, I have a mobile phone because you know I stay in touch with various people and people need to communicate with me. Mm. But you will never see it on my on my on my uh, ear. You know, mm. it's always speakerphone. Right. Uh, and I use, and I never carry it with me, never. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I, I, if I'm in the car, it's away from me. If if I'm in the um, in the office, it's away from me. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's it's just there basically to receive calls. Mm -hmm. I never use it, of course, to make calls unless it's an emergency. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So, you know, oh. it's just respecting the technology because the technology is there. So it's good to know you're walking the talk also on that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Bit, well, because if you're not an example, then uh, you become a hypocrite. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, listen, it's been, you know, just fascinating, you know, talking with you. Um, I think, uh, you know, everybody's learned a lot from this, me included. Um, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for. Um, we've run over a little bit, and so you've been very generous on that also. Thank you so much, Dr. George, for being here today. Really appreciate that. It's a pleasure, Lloyd. And, you know, any any other time that you want, you know, to have another chat, just, um, you know, call on me and it would be a pleasure. Great. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll organize that sometime in the future. That would be great. Um, sure. It's been fascinating speaking with you, you know, because you've 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 got this uh, experience, um, you know, clinical experience, research experience. Um, so it's uh, it's uh, and you're a gentleman. So uh, just to remind you, Dr. George is the author of Curing the Incurable with Holistic Medicine, The Da Vinci Secret Revealed. Nothing to do with Dan Brown and uh, Da Vinci Code. Uh, the Da Vinci Secret Revealed. Excellent name, and he practices at the Da Vinci. Holistic Health Centre in Larnaca, which is nothing to do with Dan Brown either, uh, on the Mediterranean island of Cyprus. Uh, you can find his contact details on his website, naturaltherapycentre.com. That's all one word, Natural Therapy Centre. Centre is written, just uh, to be clear, C-E-N-T-E-R.com. And I think... Uh, I know I noticed on there that you do online consultations also. So even if you are overseas, then uh, you can uh, consult online. Thank you, listener, for attending today. Thanks for everyone who participated and sent in their question. In the next episode, I'll be interviewing another expert. So watch your inbox for details on that. My name is Lloyd Borrell from electricsense.com. Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs>